Okay, folks, I want to take a minute and uh, work a couple of uh, problems from the exam review. So these are going to be really polished video productions here, so I hope you enjoy. All right, so the first one I want to look at is uh, question number 12 from your exam review. And we'll just work through a few of these derivatives here. So the first one I want to tackle is 12a. And so I'm just going to roll through these. I'm not going to do a whole lot of explanation. Uh, and hopefully just watching it being done will be enough. If you have any questions, though, feel free to let me know. So here I get that dy dx would be equal to 2x plus 150x to the 29th plus 1 over 2 radical x plus 1. And I'll go ahead and write plus 0, although I normally wouldn't. Okay. So just as a reminder, uh, for the derivative of the uh, square root of x term, if I gave you the function h of x is equal to the square root of x, I uh, recommend just memorizing its derivative. But let's say you've forgotten. Uh, the first thing you would do is you would rewrite x or h of x to uh, as x to the 1 half power. Then when you go to take the derivative, you can apply your power rule. So I brought down the uh, exponent of uh, a half and then subtracted one from the exponent so one half minus one is how we got the negative one half there but I can rewrite that as one over two x to the positive one half power which is the same thing as one over two radical x so as I said I think that you should memorize this because it's done often enough and this work is, is a little bit clunky to work in the middle of a problem Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so for b here, we've got the j prime of x. And now this is not really, um, this is kind of a facetious question. I wouldn't ask you all the function derivatives at once, but now we get a chance to practice them. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. Uh, the derivative of the second term is minus the sine of x. The derivative of the tangent of x, we said, was the secant squared of x. The derivative of the secant x, we said, was secant x tan x. Uh, the derivative of the cosecant of x is minus cosecant x cotangent x. And the derivative of the cotangent x is minus cosecant squared x. Okay. So I would know all of these for the upcoming exam. Uh, you should have them all memorized. But I would also say that these four are the most important ones to have down. Absolutely, you should have those down solid. Um, whereas these other two, you know, I would know them for the upcoming exam, but uh, I won't ask you to do uh, a whole lot with them in the future. Okay, so now let's look at uh, number C here. Oops, that's a mistake. So for number c, uh, we've got f of x is equal to e to the minus x times the tangent of uh, 1 minus x cubed plus e to the minus pi. So one thing to notice is, first of all, uh, there are two terms here. So taking derivatives says you take the derivatives term-wise. But in the first term, notice that we have a product rule. Where is that product rule? We've got e to the minus x times the tangent of uh, 1 minus x cubed. So I've got two factors here in that first term. And in fact, let's say in the second factor of the first term, I have a chain rule. OK, so let's look at that. Inside of the tangent of x, I've got this expression uh, right here, 1 minus x cubed. That's more complicated than just an x, so we'll have to keep in mind that when we go to take the derivative of the second factor of that first term, we'll have to do a chain rule. So there's a lot happening here. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So f prime of x. I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of this. So I've got two terms. Here's my first term. 
Here's my second term. Let's take the derivative of the first term. When I go to take the derivative of the first term, I have to do a product rule. So here we go. For my product rule, here is the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. What is the derivative of the tangent of an expression? The derivative of the tangent of an expression is the secant squared of that expression. Okay. But because this expression inside here was more complicated than just an x, I have a chain rule. So I need to take the derivative of what's inside the tangent of x. Okay. So what was inside the tangent of x? It was uh, 1 minus x cubed. So its derivative is 1 minus 3x squared. Normally I would not write that 0, but I just want to emphasize that there's the chain rule. Okay. So let's just start annotating what we just did. So here was uh, the first. And then all of this here is the derivative of the second. Okay, now be careful. When I say first and second, I'm not talking terms. I'm talking the factors in this first term right here. Okay. So I'm halfway through the product rule of the first term. So we had the first times the derivative of the second. Now we get plus the second, which is just the tangent of uh, 1 minus x cubed. times the derivative of the first. Oh, and I should have noticed this earlier. I apologize. Uh, notice that when I go to take the derivative of e to that expression, that's going to involve another mini chain rule, uh, just a little chain rule problem. So I'm taking now the derivative of e to the minus x. Well, the derivative of e to an expression is e to that expression. But then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of that expression. Okay. So here I've got the second times the derivative of the first. Where did this minus 1 come from? It came from the fact that when I took the derivative of e to an expression, I get e to that expression. But this expression being more complicated than just an x, it's minus x. I have to take its derivative. What is the derivative of minus x? It's negative 1. And the chain rule says we multiply that to our first uh, factor in the derivative. OK. Whew. So at this point, we're actually almost done. We've taken the derivative of the first term. That involved this uh, product rule here. Now let's go take the derivative of the second term. Be oh so careful with this. It's easy in the middle of a problem to lose sight of things. What's my variable in this problem? x. Where does the variable show up in this last term here, this second term? It does not show up. Well, that's interesting. So that means that this second term is just a constant. What is the derivative of a constant? It's 0. Okay. Uh, I'd like to clean this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and give myself some more space. Oops, undo. Missed it. I don't know if I'll be able to get this, folks. I'm not the best at this. There we go. All right. So that means that f prime of x could be rewritten as uh, e to the minus x times the secant squared of 1 minus x cubed. And let's go ahead and bring, so that just simplifies to minus 3x squared. Let's go ahead and put that out in front of that term. Plus the second, uh, which would be, in fact, uh, when we notice, we've got this constant here of negative 1. So let's pull that out. So minus uh, the tangent of 1 minus x cubed e to the minus x. This is a great place to park the answer. <clears throat> there are some problems where I'm concerned with you doing a little bit of cleaning up. This one, um, you know, I feel like you should pull uh, polynomial terms out in front of other expressions if you have a series of factors multiplied together. But I'm not really concerned about, you know, which, which of these two terms do you lead with or anything like that. Some people might ask, could you factor out an e to the minus x? You certainly could, and that would be fine. Uh, not the most adroit with these. All right. So let's look at uh, uh, letter D here. I'm going to do letter D two ways. I'm going to do letter D without seeing the shortcut. It's not too bad if you don't see the shortcut. And then we'll try letter D again uh, using a shortcut. So we get the dy dx is equal to so. What do I have here? Well, the big picture is, is I've got a square root function. And inside the square root function, 
I have uh, minus the cosine square root of x plus 1. Okay. Uh, and, it, and in fact, I've actually got three. Ch I've got uh, two chain rules. I've got three functions nested in each, inside of each other. If you wanted to, you could actually think of it in a little bit more complicated way, of saying the inside function looks like minus x squared plus one, and then we can take it one step further and say inside of the x squared we've got a cosine of x. So I do have uh, three functions nested in here, so I've got to do two chain rules when I go to take this derivative. Okay. Uh, so dy dx then is equal to, so let's take the derivative of the outermost function. Well, the derivative of the square root of an expression is 1 over 2 times the square root of that expression. So by the chain rule, I will say that the derivative of this is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of minus cosine squared x plus 1. Okay. That was the, in my, following my chain rule, that was the derivative of the outside function leaving the inside function alone. But the innermost function, this expression here, is more complicated than just an x. So the chain rule says now I need to multiply this by the derivative of this inside function. Okay. I'd like to think of this inside function as sort of an x squared function. How do we take the derivative of that? It would be minus 2 times whatever that expression is plus the derivative of 1 which is plus 0. Okay. I'll go ahead and write that plus 0. I'll need to put parentheses around it. So what is the derivative of minus uh, x squared plus 1? It would be minus 2 times whatever that expression is for x plus 0. And then here we put the cosine of x. Okay. Well, uh, because the expression inside of the squared function was more complicated than just an x, in this case it was cosine, I now have another chain rule and now I have to multiply by the derivative of the cosine of x. Okay. Well, what is the derivative of the cosine of x? The derivative of the cosine of x is minus the sine of x. Let's give myself some more space here. So we can clean this up and we could rewrite it as uh, uh, it would be 2 uh, sine x cosine x in the numerator all over 2 times the square root of uh, minus cosine squared x plus 1. And I could in fact continue to clean it up uh, writing this instead as uh, the sine of x times the cosine of x all over the square root of minus cosine squared x plus 1. And I'll let you think about it. But it turns out that we could simplify this all the way down uh, to, I believe, the cosine of x. I'll let you think about how we do that on your own. But instead, I'm now going to do this problem a different way. This is probably the better way to do the problem. So we were told originally that y is equal to the square root of minus cosine squared x um, plus 1. So as is often the case in this course, it is easier to first simplify prior to doing your calculus operations. So notice that I've got inside of the square root, I've got the cosine square root of x plus 1. Well, by our Pythagorean identity, we know that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Okay, that's a trig identity. So notice that uh, if I subtracted over the cosine squared of x, I'd get minus cosine squared of x plus 1. So that means that this expression right here can be replaced with the sine squared of x. Okay, so this gives me the square root of the sine squared of x. Great. Okay, so I did that substitution there in place of all this. I put sine squared of x. Okay. Well, I also made another specification way up here that said uh, x is between 0 and pi. The reason why I did that is now uh, between 0 and pi, what do we know about the sine function? Well, if you look at your sine function between 0 and pi, uh, it looks like that. Is that true? Hang on just a second. 
uh, that is a lie. 